you guys. I'm back in the same pajama. Okay, so I'm calm down now. It just took me a little bit. Basically, women's suffrage is at blame for so many freaking things with men. And it all started because Eve was the one that was tempted to sin first. So everybody blames women. Like, we're just, we don't matter. We're not important. Like, sucks. Anyway. So let's get into Nezra. Nerza. Okay, so the new revised standard with Apocrypha, NRSA, about the new revised standard with Apocrypha. The new revised standard is a popular translation that follows in the traditions of the King James and revised standard versions. It was written with the goal of preserving the best of the older versions while incorporating modern English. The new revised standard version, NRSV, first appeared in 1989 and has, so it's literally like the newest, like the newest version, guys first appeared in 1989 and has received wide acclaim and broad support from academics and church leaders as a Bible for all Christians. The NRSV Bible Translation Committee consists of 30 men and women who are among the top scholars in America today. They come from Protestant denominations, the Roman Catholic Church, Greek Orthodox Church, and the Greek Orthodox Church. The committee also includes a Jewish scholar, one Jewish scholar, standing in the tradition of the RSV, which was the only major English translation that included both a standard Protestant canon and the books that are traditionally used by Roman Catholic and Orthodox Christians. The so-called apocryphal or deuterocanonical books, the NRSV, is available in three formats, a standard edition with or without the apocrypha, a Roman Catholic edition, which has the so-called apocryphal or deuterocanonical books in the Roman Catholic canonical order. And the Common Bible, which includes all books that belong to the Protestant, Roman Catholic, and Orthodox canons. Okay, so 1989 was when my brother was born, so I should know how. I'm 36, so he is, his birthday is in April, though. So he's got to be 33, about 33, so that must have been 30, 30, 33 years ago. Let me double check this. I should just text him how old are you, but it's going to take him a while to respond because he's working. Okay, um, calculator. 30, let's go back here, 2022 minus 1989. He's 33 years and I'll be 37 in November. So yeah, so he's, we're always three or four years apart. It seemed like we're three or four age wise apart because of where our birthdays fall. Okay. Um, bu -bu -bum. And the common Bible, which includes all the all the books that belong to the Protestant, Roman Catholic, and the Orthodox canons. The NRSV stands out among the many translations available today as the Bible translation that is the most widely authorized by the churches. It received the endorsement of 33 Protestant churches. It received the imprimatur of the American and Canadian conferences of Catholic bishops, and it received the blessing of a leader of the Greek Orthodox Church. Rooted in the past, but updated for today's Bible readers, the NRSV continues the tradition of William Tyndale, the King James Version, the American Standard Version, and the Revised Standard Version. Equally important, it is it sets a new standard for the 21st century. The NRSV stands out among the many translations because it is a literal, it is as literal as possible in adhering to the ancient text and only as free as necessary to make the meaning clear and graceful, understandable English. It draws on newly available sources that increase our understanding of many previously obscure, obscure biblical passages. These sources include newfound manuscripts, the Dead Sea Scrolls, other texts, inscriptions, and archaeological finds from the ancient Near East and new understandings of Greek and Hebrew grammar. I am buying this Bible today. Okay. Improvements over the RSV are of four different kinds. Updating the language of the RSV by replacing archaic forms of speech addressed to God, the, thou, was, thou, etc., and by replacing words whose meaning has changed significantly since the RSV translation. For example, Paul's statement in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 25, that he was stoned once, making the translation more accurate, helping it to be more easily understood, especially when it's read out loud, and making it clear when the original text intend to include all humans, male and female, and where they intend to refer only to the male and or female gender. Special thanks 
to the National Council of the Churches of Christ in the USA for permission to use the new revised standard version. Okay, guys. So this, like this part I really like about, okay. So the new standard version Bible, this is the uh, disclaimer at the bottom, copyright 1989, Division of Christian Education of the National Council of the Churches of Christ in the United States of America, used by permission, all rights reserved. Okay. So it starts off with the 39 Old Testament books. <coughs> so all of those apocrypha are not mixed in here. It's separated, which I like. Then it has the 27 New Testament books, which everybody agrees with of Protestant and Catholic religion. And then it has a separate section for the Deuter Ocanical, which are the 18 books of the Bible that are not considered divinely like inspired. However, they are considered books of the Bible, guys. So I really like this Bible. I really like what they're doing. I've never heard of it until recently when I was doing some research and it's been around for 33 years, guys, which is pretty cool. So I was in preschool when this came out, which is pretty cool. Okay, so um, so like I said in my last one, if you watched the last one, I'm not going to be around, like I'm going to be somewhere else in two months. So I'm not going to be able to finish this. So I'm going to have to task continuing reading through the Bible and all these other ones with someone else because I'm not going to be able to finish all this before I go. Um, so which is like heartbreaking to me, but like I would rather be where I'm going than with you guys here. So, okay. So I'm I'm not going to read all these. I'm going to read Tobit because Tobit is an important name to me. I'm going to read all of the women's Bibles, which are Deuterocanonical, whatever passage, uh, scripture, which is Judith, additions to Esther, uh, Susanna. I'm all about wisdom. I want to get as much wisdom as possible. So I'm going to read wisdom. Um, I am going to read all of the Maccabees and the prayer of Azaria and the prayer of Manasseh and the addition to Psalms because I already read it. So the rest of them, someone else needs to read. I can't, I can't read all of them guys. I'm sorry. It's not, it's not going to happen. So that's, that's where we're at. That's the update as so we'll see how far I get with this in two months. Um, so those are what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to write these down so I don't forget. Okay, so I'm reading, I've committed to reading Tobit, Judith, Additions to Esther, because I've already read, I'm pretty sure I've already read Esther. I'm going to read Wisdom. I'm going to read um, Prayer of Azari. Actually, I'm curious about the letter of Jeremiah. Letter of Jeremiah. I'm going to add another one. It's going to be a while, guys. Um, I'm going to read the prayer of Azaria. I'm going to read Susanna. I'm going to read one through four Maccabees. I'm going to read prayer of Manassas. I'm going to read additions to Psalms. And that's all the ones I committed to on here. Okay, Old Testament. I have gotten as far as Proverbs. So I did read Esther. Okay, I want to read this, this Son of Solomon. So we're going to skip Ecclesiastes. There's no way I'm going to get all this done in two months. Um, Isaiah, Jeremiah, if I'm going to read the letter. Okay. So if I get to the letter of Jeremiah, great. If I don't feel like I'm going to have time, then I'm not going to read Jeremiah. Jeremiah in the New Testament. Or sorry, Old Testament. Why did I put oh, Old Testament? Okay. So I might be skipping Jeremiah because I can't read that in their letters. Uh, Lamentations, I'm going to skip. Ezekiel, I'm skipping. Daniel, I'm skipping. Hosea, Hosea I'm skipping. Joel, I'm skipping. My cousin's name is Joel, so I should read Joel. Joel. Okay. Um, I don't want to skip Daniel. Daniel. I feel like I already know it by heart, but like Amos. My nephew's name is Amos. This is so annoying, you guys. Amos. I'm not going to be able to read all these. This is heartbreaking. Obadiah, Jonah. I have a brother-in-law named Jonah. I'm going to read that one. 
know, I'm pretty sure I know it well. Um, Obadiah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So for sure I'm going to read Malachi because it's the last book. I'm going to have to alter this list, you guys. There's no way I'm going to be able to do all these for you. I'm sorry. Someone else is going to have to do it. I can only do so much. I've read all of Matthew. I've read all of Mark. I've read all of Luke. I've read all of John. I've read Acts. I've read literally all of the Old Testament. I read Revelation to you guys. Um, is there anything on here that I feel like I should read? Jude. I'm going to read Jude in the New Testament. I feel like I should read Hebrews too. There's no way I'm going to get through this. I should probably read first through third John, even though I've already, oh my God. You know what? This is not possible. Like, this is not possible. I need to make cuts. I'm making cuts, guys. Okay, so prioritize this. Let's see here. Um, maybe someone else can tell me what to do. Let's try Google. If you're going to die tomorrow, <laughs> what books? of the Bible should you read? Let's let's stretch this. If you're going to die in a month. And books of the Bible you should read again and again. Let's do this. Okay, guys. So we have recommending. Here are a ton of them. Oh, it's one of those where you have to do read more. So many freaking ads. So annoying. Okay, Genesis. Got it. I already read it. Next. Why are so many pop-ups? So annoying. Okay, what is this one? John. Okay. Um. Okay, so you should read John. You should read Romans. Killing me, Smalls, you're killing me. Um, you should read Psalms. We got that covered. We're good. Ephesians. Okay, I'm just going to like star the ones that they're telling me to read so that way I can eliminate this from my list later on. What else should we read? Okay, Proverbs. Done. We got it, guys. We're covered. We got Sans and Proverbs covered, guys. Philippians. Okay. Okay. What else should we read? <clears throat> first John. Just first John, not second and third John. Okay. Um, this is helping me eliminate these so much faster. James. We should read James. Got it. Okay, what else? There's one more book. Isaiah. See, it's in the, the Old Testament, and I was not planning to read that, so apparently that was wrong of me to skip over. Okay, so we got our 10 books. We have read two of them. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, Um. all right. Rich Apocrypha. Apocrypha. Should... I read if I'm going to die soon. What is the Apocrypha and should you read it? There are a variety of genres, including why Apocrypha is removed from the Bible. Did Jesus have the Apocryphal religion? What is Apocrypha? Desiring God, purgatory, and praying for the dead. Oh, good Lord. Um, six, five reasons why the Apocrypha is not inspired. So basically, a Christian should read the Apocrypha. Someone else is saying the Apocrypha in the Bible by David Hawking. Uh, why were the books of the Old Testament pro biblical apocrypha Wikipedia rural New York? Okay, nobody's recommending which ones to read. So I'm just gonna go with the ones that I decided to read, which is gonna be Tobit, Judith, Esther editions, because I've already read Esther Wisdom. Um Susanna, Maccabees, 
Psalm editions because I've already read it. And then the prayers, if there's time, we'll do that. Um, but otherwise, I'm probably going to have to skip them, guys. I'm sorry. It's just there's too many. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to worry about Amos. I'm not going to worry about Daniel. I already know that story backwards and forward. I don't really remember Joel, and I'm curious about it just because of my, my cousin. So I'm going to keep that on there as a possibility. Jonah, I already know that backwards and forward. Hebrews was not recommended, so I'm just going to skip it. Jude was not recommended, but it's I'm pretty sure. Is it Jude a female character? If it is, I'm reading it for sure. Jude, male or female in Bible. Jude is... Jude, a boy in the Bible, is Jude a woman in the Bible? Cinnamon Judd, biblical, one of the apostles, also called Thaddeus, a male given. Okay, we're not reading Jude. Who cares? Fuck Jude. Fuck Thaddeus. Okay, Malachi. Um, I'm pretty sure these are all men. I don't care. I don't freaking care. Okay. Um, who else? Okay, guys. So this is my final list of what I'm going to read. So I'm going to go through and then... And then I'm going to read the Gospel of Mary because apparently that got removed. And it's not even included in the freaking Catholic Bible or the Apocrypha. It's just gone. Okay, so this source is not secure. It's the gnosis.org library of Mary Gospel, and it only includes three chapters, four, five, and eight. Sorry, four chapters and nine. So apparently chapters six through seven are missing, and chapters one through three are missing. This makes me so fucking furious, you guys. Like, I'm not even kidding. This makes me as angry as Nazis destroying Jewish books. Pages one through six are missing. Fantastic. Nobody, nobody knows what happened. Unbelievable. Pieces of fucking shit. This one is secure. It's called gospels.net and it's the gospel of Mary. So I'm going to go with this one because it's secure. I don't trust on secure sites. So I'm going, getting rid of that. Um, so this is gospel.net. Gospel of Mary PDF so frustrating you guys so mad right now so fucking furious right now the gospel of mary in pdf format it's 248 pages but there's a lot of like oxford early christian gospels general editors i don't so it's technically not this long like they just have all these freaking blank pages i don't understand Oxford University Press, blah, 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 series, preface, blah, blah, blah. Just a lot of beginning crap that's not even like more preface. You need a series preface and a preface. That seems a little overkill. Contents. Part one, introduction. Ten, attestation, manuscripts, language, date, characters of the Gospel of Mary, unity, genre, how Gnostic is the Gospel of Mary, the Gospel of Mary and the New Testament, part two text text and translations, introduction, manuscripts, papyrus. It's just why, why is this? I don't understand why all this needs to be in here. And then there's commentary and there's abbreviations. Good God. Okay. I'm downloading this on my computer, but I'm probably not going to read this. Like, so I'm not going to have time. Okay. Um, I don't, what am I looking at? No, this would not go under here. Where do I want to file this here? Great. Okay. I was saved on my computer. Um, we will come to it. I'm going to bookmark this other one and read that to you guys at some point. I'm trying to stay in order right now as best as I can, even though I really just want to read this and nothing else. <laughs> like, because apparently this is literally like a secret fucking scroll because it's missing so many fucking chapters.
pages 11 through 14 are missing. What else is missing? Unbelievable. Pieces of fucking shit. Fucking women's suffrage. Okay. Um, so we are going to get into Tobit now, guys. Um, apologize for the very long introduction and me getting very frustrated that the gospel of Mary is like not even fucking important to these fucking asshole fucking men. Okay. Who fucking wrote the fucking Bible? Were there any women on the committee when this shit went down? Probably not. Okay. Tobit. One through seven. Okay. So this is from the new revised standard with Apocrypha. What is this? Why do I have this? Red letter cross reference, straw numbers, footnotes, or verse numbers. Interesting. So many options. Okay. So this is from BibleStudyTools.com. I included the link in there for you guys, but I'm reading Tobit 1. Okay. Chapter 1 or verse 1 of Tobit 1. This book tells the story of Tobit, son of Tobiel, son of Henealiel, son of Abdul, Ad, Aduel, son of Gabal, son of Raphael, son of Regol, of the descendants of a seal of the tribe of Natali who in the days of King Shalmanzir of the Assyrians was taken into captivity from Thisbe, which is to the south of Kedesh, Naphtali, and Upper Galilee, above Asher toward the west and north of Fogor. Uh, I, Tobit, walked in the ways of truth and righteousness all the days of my life. I performed many acts of charity for my kindred and my people who had gone with me in exile of Nineveh in the land of the Assyrians. When I was in my own country, in the land of Israel, while I was still a young man, the whole tribe of my ancestor Naphtali deserted the house of David in Jerusalem. This city had been chosen from among all the tribes of Israel, where all the tribes of Israel should offer sacrifice and where the temple, the dwelling of God, had been consecrated and established for all generations forever. All my kindred in our ancestral house of Naphtali sacrificed to the calf that, that king, Jeroboam of Israel, had erected in Dan and on all the mountains of Galilee. But I alone went often to Jerusalem for the festivals, as it prescribed for all Israel by an everlasting decree. I would hurry off to Jerusalem with the first fruits of the crops and the first lanes of the flock, the tithes of the cattle and the first shearings of the sheep. I would give these to the priests, the sons of Aaron, at the altar. Likewise, the tenth of the grain, wine, olive, pomegranates, figs, and the rest of the fruits to the sons of Levi, who ministered at Jerusalem. Also for six years, I would save up a second tenth in money and go and distribute in Jerusalem. A third tenth I would give to the orphans and widows and to the converts who had attached themselves to Israel. I would bring it and give it to them in the third year and we would eat it according to the ordinance decreed concerning it in the law of Moses and according to the instructions of Deborah, the mother of my father, Tobiel. Oh, Deborah is his mom, that's cool. For my father had died and left me an orphan. You're not an orphan if you still have a mom, dude. But apparently, you don't fucking care about women either. When I became a man, I married a woman, a member of our family, and by her, I became the father of a son who I named Tobias. After I was carried away captive to Assyria and came as a captive to Nineveh, everyone of my kindred and my people ate the food of Gentiles, of the Gentiles. But I kept myself from eating the food of the Gentiles because I was mindful of God with all my heart. The Most High gave me favor and good standing with Shalmaneser, and I used to buy everything he needed. Until his death, I used to go into Media and buy for him there. While in the country of Media, I left bags of silver worth 10 talents in trust with Gabal, the brother of Gabriel. But when Shal Shalmaneser died and his son Sennacherib reigned in his place, the highways into Media became unsafe and I could no longer go there. In the days of Shalmaneser, I performed many acts of charity to my kindred, those of my tribe. I would give my food to the hungry and my clothing to the naked. And if I saw the dead body of any of my people thrown out behind the wall of Nineveh, I would bury it. I also buried any whom King Sennacherib put to death when he came fleeing from Judea. In these, in those days of judgment that the king of heaven executed upon himself, him because of his blasphemies. For in his anger, he put to death many Israelites, but I would secretly remove the bodies and bury them. So when Sennacherib looked for them, he could not find them. Then one of the Ninevites went and informed the king about me, that I was burying them. So I hid myself. But when I realized that the king knew about me and that I was being searched for to be put to death, I was afraid and ran away. 
Then all my property was confiscated. Nothing was left to me that was not taken into the royal treasury except for my wife, Anna, and my son, Tobias. But not for 40 days past before two of Sennacherib's sons killed him. And they fled to the mountains of Erot. And his son, Azar, Hayden, reigned after him. He appointed Ahirkar, the son of my brother, Haniel, over all the accounts of his kingdom. And he had authority over the entire administration. Ahirkar interceded for me, and I returned to Nineveh. Now Ahirkar was chief cupbearer, keeper of the signet, and in charge of administration of the accounts under King Sennacherib of Assyria. So Asar Hayden reappointed him. He was my nephew and so so a close relative. So a close relative. Switch and save instantly fight cheaper current. No, close. Garbage. Okay, so now we're on Tobit 2, guys. Then during the reign of Azar, I returned home, and my wife Anna and my son Tobias were restored to me. At our festival of Pentecost, which is the sacred festival of weeks, a good dinner was prepared for me, and I reclined to eat. When the table was set for me and an abundance of food placed before me, I said to my son Tobias, go, my child, and bring whatever poor person you may find of our people among the exiles in Nineveh, <coughs> who is wholeheartedly mindful of God, and he shall eat together with me. I will wait for you until you come back. So Tobias went to look for some poor person of our people. When he had returned, he said, Father, and I replied, here I am, my child. Then he went out to say, look, Father, one of our own people has been murdered and thrown into the marketplace, and now he lies there strangled. Then I sprang up, left the dinner before even tasting it, and removed the body from the square and laid it in one of the rooms until sunset when I might bury it. When I returned, I washed myself and ate my food in sorrow. Then I remembered the prophecy of Amos, how he said against Bethel, your festivals shall be turned into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I wept. When the sun had set, I went and dug a grave and buried him. And my neighbors laughed and said, is he still not afraid? He has already been hunted down to put to be put to death for doing this. And he ran away, yet here he is again burying the dead. That same night, I washed myself and went into my courtyard and slept by the wall of the courtyard. And my face was uncovered because of the heat. I did not know that there were sparrows on the wall. Their fresh droppings fell into my eyes and produced white films. I went to physicians to be healed, but the more they treated me with ointments, the more my vision was obscured by the white films until I became completely blind. Four years, for four years, I remained unable to see. All my kindred were sorry for me, and Ahirkar took care of me for two years before he went to Elimaeus. At that time, also, my wife Anna earned money at women's work. She used to send what she made to the owners, and they would pay wages to her. One day, the seventh of Dystress, when she cut off a piece she had woven and sent it to the owners, they paid her full wages and also gave her a young goat for a meal. When she returned to me, the goat began to bleat. So I called her and said, where did you get this goat? It is surely not stolen, is it? Return it to the owners, for we have no right to eat anything stolen. But she said to me, it was given to me as a gift in addition to my wages. But I did not believe her. And I told her to return it to the owners. I became flushed with anger against her over this. Then she replied to me, where are your acts of charity? Where are your righteous deeds? These things are known about you. Yeah, Tobias, Tobiet. Your son's Tobias, sorry. Tobit three. Then with much grief, in anguish of heart, I wept, and with groaning began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You judge the world. And now, O Lord, remember me and look favorably upon me. Do not punish me for my sins and for unwitting offenses and those that my ancestors committed before you. They sinned against and disobeyed your commandments. So you gave us over to plunder, exile, and death to become the talk, the byword, and an object of reproach among all the nations, among whom you have dispersed us. And now your many judgments are true in exacting penalty from me for my sins. For we have not kept your commandments and have not walked in accordance with truth before you. So now deal with me as you will. Command my spirit to be taken from me so that I may be released from the face of the earth and become dust. For it is better for me to die than to live because I have had to listen to undeserved insults and great is the sorrow within me. Command, O Lord, that I be released from this distress. Release me to go to the eternal home and do not. O Lord, turn your face away from me. For it is better for me to die than to see so much distress in my life and to listen to insults. On the, on the same day, 
at Ek Batana in media, it also happened that Sarah, the daughter of Regal, Regal was reproached by one of his, her father's mates, for she had been married to seven husbands, and the wicked demon Asmodeus had killed each of them before they had been with her, as is customary for wives. So the man, maid said to her, you are the one who kills your husbands. See, you have already been married to seven husbands and have not borne the name of a single one of them. Why do you beat us? Because your husbands are dead? Go with them. May we never see a son or daughter of yours. On that day, she was grieved in spirit and wept. When she had gone up to her father's upper room, she intended to hang herself. But she thought it over and said, never shall they reproach my father, saying to him, you had only one beloved daughter, but she hanged herself because of her distress. And I shall bring my father in his old age down in sorrow to Hades. It is better for me to not hang myself, but to pray the Lord that I may die and not listen to this, these reproaches anymore. At that same time, with hands outstretched toward the window, she prayed and said, Blessed are you, merciful God. Blessed is your name forever. Let all your works praise you forever. And now, Lord, I turn my face to you and raise my eyes toward you. Command that I be released from the earth and not listen to such reproaches anymore. You know, O Master, that I am innocent of any defilement with a man. Um, and that I have not disgraced my name or the name of my father in the land of my exile. I am my father's only child. He has no other child to be his heir. And he has no close relative or other kindred for whom I should keep myself as wife. <clears throat> already, already seven husbands of man, mine have died. Why should I still live? But if it is not pleasing to you, O Lord, to take my life, hear me in my disgrace. At that very moment, the prayers of both of them were had heard in the glorious presence of God. So Raphael was sent to heal both of them. Tobit, by removing the white films from his eyes so that he might see God's light with his eyes. And Sarah, daughter of Regal, by giving her in marriage to Tobias, son of Tobit. And by setting her free from the wicked demon Asmodeus. For Tobias went in, was entitled to have her before all others who had desired to marry her. At the same time that Tobit returned from the courtyard into his house, Sarah, daughter of Regal, came down from the upper room. Tobit 4. That same day, Tobit remembered the money that he had left in trust with Gabal at Regaz in Media. And he said to himself, now I have asked for death. Why do I not call my son Tobias and explain to him about the money before I die? Then he called his son Tobias. And when he came to him, he said, my son, when I die, give me a proper burial. Honor your mother and do not abandon her all the days of her life. Do whatever pleases her and do not grieve her in anything. Remember her, my son, because she faced many dangers for you while you were in her womb. And when she dies, bury her beside me in the same grave. Revere the Lord all your days, my son, and refuse to sin or to transgress his commandments. Live uprightly all the days of your life and do not walk in the ways of wrongdoing. For those who act in accordance with truth will prosper <coughs> in all their activities to all those who practice righteousness. Give alms from your possessions and do not let your eyes your eye begrudge the gift when you make it. Do not turn your face away from anyone who is poor and the face of God will not be turned away from you. If you have many possessions, make your gift from them in proportion. If you do not be afraid to give according to the little you have. So you will be laying up a good treasure for yourself against the day of necessity. For almsgiving delivers from death and keeps you from going into the darkness. Indeed, almsgiving for all who practice it is an excellent offering in the presence of the Most High. Beware, my son, of every kind of fornication. First of all, marry a woman from among the descendants of your ancestors. Do not marry a foreign woman who is not of your father's tribe, for we are the descendants of the prophets. Remember, my son, the, that Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our ancestors of old, all took wives from among their kindred. They were blessed in their children and their posterity will inherit the land. So now, my son, love your kindred and in your heart do not disdain your kindred, the sons and daughters of your people, by refusing to take a wife for yourself from among them. For in pride there is ruin and great confusion, and in idleness there is loss and dire poverty, because idleness is the mother of famine. Do not keep over until the next day the wages of those who work for you, but pay them at once. If you serve God, you will receive payment. Watch yourself, my son, in everything you do and discipline yourself in all your conduct. 
and what you hate, do not do any to anyone. Do not drink wine to excess or let drunkenness go with you on your way. Give some of your food to the hungry and some of your clothing to the naked. Give all your surplus as alms and do not let your eye begrudge your giving of alms. Place your bread on the grave of the righteous, but give none to sinners. Seek advice from every wise person and do not despise any useful counsel. At all times, bless the Lord God and ask him that your ways may be made straight and that all your paths and plans may prosper. <clears throat> For none of the nations has understanding, but the Lord himself will give them good counsel. But if he chooses otherwise, he casts down to deepest Hades. So now, my child, remember these commandments and do not let them be erased from your heart. And now, my son, let me explain to you that I left 10 talents of silver in trust with Gabel, son of Gab Gabrius, at Rages in Media. Do not be afraid, my son, because we have become poor. You have great wealth if you fear God and flee from every sin and do what is good in the sight of the Lord your God. <coughs> Tobit 5. Then Tobias... Tobias, sorry, answered his father, Tobit, I will do everything you have commanded me, father, but how can I obtain the money from him since he does not know me and I do not know him? What evidence am I to give him so that he will recognize and trust me and give me the money? Also, I do not know the roads of media or how to get there. Then Tobit answered his son, Tobias, he gave me his bond and I gave him my bond. I divided his in two. We each took one part and I put one with the money. And now 20 years have passed since I left this money in, in trust. So now my son, find yourself a trustworthy man to go with you and we will pay him wages until you return. But get back the money from Gabriel. So Tobias went out to look for a man to go with him to media. Someone who was acquainted with the, with the way. He went out and found the angel, the angel Raphael standing in front of him, but he did not perceive that he was an angel of God. Tobias said to him, where do you come from, young man? From your kindred, the Israelites, he replied, and I have come here to work. Then Tobias said to him, do you know the way to go to Midia? Yes, he replied. I've been there many times. I'm acquainted with it and know all the roads. I have often traveled to Midia and would stay with our kinsman, Gabriel, who lives in Regus of Midia. It is a journey of two days from Ekpatana to Rajas. <clears throat> for it lies in a mountainous area while Ekpatana is in the middle of the plain. Then Tobias said to him, wait for me, young man, until I go in and tell my father, for I do need you to travel with me and I will pay you your wages. He replied, all right, I will wait, but do not take too long. So Tobias went in to tell his father Tobit and said to him, I have just found a man who is one of our own Israelite kindred. He replied, call the man in, my son, so that I may learn about his family and to what tribe he belongs and whether he is trustworthy enough to go with you. Then Tobias went out and called him and said, young man, my father is calling for you. So he went in to him and Tobit greeted him first. He replied, joyous greetings to you. But Tobit retorted, what joy is left for me anymore? I'm a man without eyesight. I cannot see the light of heaven, but I lie in darkness like the dead who no longer see the light. Although still alive, I am among the dead. I hear people, but I cannot see them. But the young man said, take courage. The time is near for God to heal you. Take courage. Then Tobit said to him, to him, my son Tobias wishes to go to media. Can you accompany him and guide him? I will pay your wages, brother. He answered, I can go with him and I know all the roads. For I have often gone to media and have crossed all its plains. And I am fam familiar with its mountains and all of its roads. Then Tobit said to him, brother, of what family are you and from what tribe? Tell me, brother. He replied, why do you need to know my tribe? But Tobit said, I want to be sure, brother, whose son you are and what your name is. He replied, I am Azariah, the son of the great Hanaya, one of your relatives. Then Tobit said to him, welcome. God save you, brother. Do not feel bitter toward me, brother, because I wanted to be sure about your ancestry. It turns out that you are a kinsman and of good and noble lineage. For I knew Hananiah and Nathan, the two sons of Shemelia, and they used to go with me to Jerusalem and worshipped with me there and were not led astray. Your kindred are good people. You come of good stock. Hearty welcome. Then he added, I will pay you a drachma a day as wages, as well as expenses for yourself and my son. So go with my son. And I will add something to your wages. Raphael answered, I will go with him. So do not fear. 
we shall leave in good health and return to you in good health because the way is safe. I love how much manipulation there is in the Bible. It's just like hilarious. So Tobit said to him, blessings be upon you, brother. Then he called his son and said to him, son, prepare supplies for the journey and set out with your brother. May God in heaven bring you safely there and return you in good health to me. And may his angel, my son, accompany you both for your safety. Before he went out to start his journey, he kissed his father and mother. Tobit then said to him, have a safe journey. But his mother began to weep and said to Tobit, why is it that you have sent my child away? Is he not the staff of our hand as he goes in and out before us? Do not heap money upon money, but let it be a ransom for our child. For the life is given to us by the Lord is enough for us. Tobit said to her, do not worry. Our child will leave in good health and return to us in good health. Your eyes will see him on the day when he returns to you in good health. Say no more. Do not fear for them, my sister. For a good angel will accompany him. His journey will be successful and he will come back in good health. Tobit's a good husband, guys. Okay, so this is Tobit 6. What are we at? Okay, 40 minutes. We got two chapters left, guys. Okay, so Tobit 6. So he stopped weeping. The young man went out and the angel went with him. And the dog came out with him and went along with him. So they both journeyed along. And when the first night overtook them, they camped by the Tigris River. Then the young man went down to wash his feet in the Tigris River. Suddenly, a large fish leaped up from the water and tried to swallow the young man's foot. And he cried out. But the angel said to the young man, catch hold of the fish and hang on to it. So the young man grasped the fish and drew it up on the land. Then the angel said to him, cut open the fish and take out its gall, heart and liver. Keep them with you, but throw away the intestines for its gall, heart and liver are useful as medicine. So after cutting open the fish, the young man gathered together the gall, heart and liver. Then he roasted and ate some of the fish and kept some to be salted. The two continued on their way together until they were near media. Then the young man questioned the angel and said to him, Brother Asaria, what medicinal value is there in the fish's heart and liver and in the gall? He replied, as for the fish's heart and liver, you must burn them to make a smoke in the presence of a man or woman afflicted by a demon or evil spirit. And every affliction will, we didn't keep this in the Bible. And every affliction will flee away and never remain with that person any longer. Unfucking believable Sorry, guys. And as for the gall, anoint a person's eyes with white films have appeared on them. Blow upon them, upon the white films, and the eyes will be healed. When he entered media and already was approaching Ekpatana, Raphael said to the young man, Brother Tobias, here I am. He answered. Then Raphael said to him, we must stay this night in the home of Ragal. He is your relative and he is a daughter named Sarah. He has a daughter named Sarah. He has no male heir and no daughter except Sarah only. And you, as next of kin to her, have before all other men a hereditary claim on her. Also, it is right for you to inherit her father's possessions. Moreover, the girl is sensible, brave, and very beautiful, and her father is a good man. He continued, you have every right to take her in marriage. So listen to me, brother. Tonight I will speak to her father about the girl so that we may take her to be your bride. When we return from Rags, Regez, we celebrate... We will celebrate her marriage. For I know that Regal can be can by no means keep her from you or promise her to another man without incurring the penalty of death according to the decree of the book of Moses. Indeed, he knows that you, rather than any other man, are entitled to marry his daughter. So now listen to me, brother. And tonight we shall speak concerning the girl and arrange her engagement to you. And when we return from our guests, we will take her and bring her back with us to the house. Then Tobias said in answer to Raphael, Brother Azaria, I have heard that she already has been married to seven husbands and that they died in the bridal chamber. On the night when they went into her, into her, they would die. Okay, God. I have heard people saying that it was a demon that killed them. Brother, this is getting interesting. It does not harm her, but it kills anyone who desires to approach her. So now... Since I am the only son my father has, I'm afraid that I may die and bring my father's and my mother's life to their grave, grieving for me. And they have no other son to bury them. But Raphael said to him, do, not, do you not remember your father's orders when he commanded you to take a wife from your father's house? Now listen to me, brother, and say no more about this demon. Take her. I know that this, is very, that this very night she will be given to you in marriage. When you enter the bridal chamber, take some of the fish's liver and heart and put them on the embers of the incense and odor will be given off. 
the demon will smell it and flee and will never be seen near her anymore. Now, when you are about to go to bed with her, both of you must first stand up and pray, imploring the Lord of heaven that mercy and safety may be granted to you. Do not be afraid, for she was set apart for you before the world was made. You will save her and she will go with you. This is like the best love story in the Bible, you guys. I presume that you will have children by her and they will be as brothers to you. Now say no more. When Tobias heard the words of Raphael and learned that she was his kinswoman, related through his father lineage, he loved her very much and his heart was drawn to her. This is beautiful, you guys. Tobit, seven. This is the last chapter and then we'll break. Now when they entered Patana, Tobias said to him, Brother Azaria, take me straight to our brother Regal. So he took him to Regal's house where they found him sitting beside the courtyard door. They greeted him first and he replied, joyous greetings, brothers. Welcome and good health. Then he brought them into his house. He said to his wife, Edna, how much the young man resembles my kinsman Tobit. Then Edna questioned them saying, where are you from brothers? They answered, we belong to the descendants of Naphtali who are exiles in Nineveh. She said to them, do you know our kinsman Tobit? And they replied, yes, we know him. Then she asked them, is he in good health? They replied, he is alive and in good health. And Tobias added, he is my father. At that, Regal jumped up and kissed him and wept. He also spoke to him as follows. Blessings on you, my child, son of a good and noble father. Oh, most miserable of calamities, that such an upright and beneficent man has become blind. He then embraced his kinsman, Tobias, and wept. His wife, Edna, also wept for him, and their daughter, Sarah, likewise wept. <coughs> then Regal slaughtered a ram from the flock and received them very warmly. When they had bathed and washed themselves and had reclined to dine, Tobias said to Raphael, Brother, Azaria, ask Regal to give me my kinswoman, Sarah. But Regal overheard it and said to the lad, eat and drink and be married tonight. For no one except you, my brother, has the right to marry my daughter, Sarah. Likewise, I am not at liberty to give her to any other man than yourself because you are my nearest relative. But let me explain to you the true situation more fully, my child. <coughs> I have given her to seven men of our kinsmen and all died on the night when they went into her. But now my child eat and drink and the Lord will act on behalf of you both. But Tobias said, I will neither eat nor drink anything until you settle the things that pertain to me. So Regal said, I will do so. She is given to you in accordance with the decree in the book of Moses. And it has been decreed from heaven that she be given to you. Take your kinswoman from now on. You are her brother and she is your sister. She is given to you from today and forever. May the Lord of heaven, my child, guide and prosper you both this night and grant you mercy and peace. Then Regal summoned his daughter. Sarah, when she came to him, he took her by the hand and gave her to Tobias saying, take her to be your wife in accordance with the law and decree written in the book of Moses. Take her and bring her safely to your father and may the God of heaven prosper your journey with his peace. Then he called her mother and told her to bring writing material and he wrote out a copy of marriage contract to the effect that he gave her to him as wife according to the decree of the laws of Moses. Then he began to eat and drink. Regal called his wife Edna and said to her sister, get the other room ready and take her. So she went and made the bed in the room as he had told her and brought Sarah there. She wept for her daughter. Then wiping away the tears, she said to her, take courage, my daughter. The Lord of heaven grant you joy in place of your sorrow. Take courage, my daughter. Then she went out. Okay, so we will do to buy 8 through 14 next time. <clears throat> so I'm just going to leave this here on my computer where it's at. Um, we got the Gospel of Mary for another time. Can't get rid of this. I'm keeping that up. Okay, guys, that was to buy it. I was really good. I'm really disappointed that it's not in that NIV or King James Version or many other Protestant Bibles. Um, and it's not over yet. All right. So I'm going to leave you guys on a little cliffhanger there and see you next time, which will be tomorrow. Bye.